brutal stretch run for the Red Raiders. Five of their last seven against ranked opponents. And see why Bob Knight might be a little frightened. Mighty White, what he might be watching. Qantas White hits the three-pointer right there. Now tied at 10. Will Chavis trying to help on Ebi Ara. They dish it out to the open white. He had eight of the Sooners first 13 points. They're on top 13 to 10. Later in the half, Tech gets going. Ronald Ross the steal. Ronald Ross the jam. Tech cuts the lead to one. Still first half. To see Powell. Nice pass there to Andre Emmett with the layup. 22-19. Tech just over 10 to go. Waiting moments of the half now. Powell gets the layup. Tech up by one of the half shots. 63%. Still up only one. Second half. They get called for the charge, and Bob is incensed, Digger. Yeah, very incensed, but now. Juanis White, next play coming down after Knight lets it out. Lets it out to the officials. His son Patrick pulls him away. Patrick. But now, game saving. This play. is where they get you. Juanis White. Jabari Brown for the alley oop. They're up seven with 11 to go. Now, later in the half, it's White. Addition to Brown, 60 to 56, buck 30 to go, less than a minute left. Who are they going to foul? Had a chance to foul Brown, the 58% foul shooter. They don't foul him. They don't foul D'Angelo Alexander, a 68% free throw shooter. Sooners run it down all the way to 20 seconds. White nails a three, and that is the dagger. Oklahoma gets the win, 63 to 58. And that was a difference in there. When you look at it, Quantus White as well as Hollis Price, too quick to guard for Texas Tech defensively. Both coaches agreeing afterwards, guard play was the key in this one. I thought that was the key, our, our defense and getting key stops. But our, our resiliency today was really good. We, we, always, we always had an answer. And when you go on the road, uh, that's the big key to winning. You've got to be able to answer. And our, our two senior guards were outstanding. Their guards are just a little quicker. Uh, they're quicker offensively than we are defensively. And uh, we spent most of the ball game trying to, uh, trying to contain the two of them and just, uh, just weren't able to. Well, Tech now four and six in the Big 12. And Digger, this absolutely devastating as you look at their tourney chances. Yeah, this is one game they wanted to win at home because if you look at the rest of the schedule, they still have to play Texas twice, starting at Texas on Big Monday. And then, of course, they have to play Kansas at home, Oklahoma State on the road, and, yes, at Baylor. And that's going to be a tough game. You'll know why a little bit later. And, of course, Texas A&M at home. Now here, Sheldon Williams trying to change that. Sean Dockery doing his part. Little floater there, puts two up by 10. Then Sheldon Williams taking over, Digger. He's just blocking shot after shot. He comes over here and takes care of this one right away when he blocks Harper's shot. And then he comes back. Vanderlaan, he can't get it away. Just does an excellent job of being a defender in the paint. Takes it over. J.J. Reddick finds him in the post. Duke now goes up 39-22 at halftime based on J.J.'s assist. Now more from Williams in the second half. Hooping the foul career high, 20 points for him. But it's the Virginia native Reddick doing the damage here. Off balance, great move, gets it in. 15 points for Reddick. Now on offense, he comes down again. Great play, makes things happen for him offensively. Drives to the paint. This is to Dante Jones, who finds Williams. Easy lay-in. Great night for Williams, 20 points. Now Dukey's up by 13. Dante Jones, check this out. Through the lane, throwing it down. And the push-up for emphasis. Oh, and Dante, do it again, this. do it again. Oh, big stand. Couple push-ups. Thank you very much. You're legit. That's West Point. Every time you want to like Virginia Digger, they go out and lose two straight like this. They lost to North Carolina, lost to Duke. They still got to go to Wake Forest, a non-conference game to Ohio and Florida State. They got Maryland still at home. They are in serious trouble with a capital T. But Duke coming off that loss to Wake Forest, a 19-4 run early in that first half, put them up 27-10. Eight minutes to go, they never looked back. Marquette in just two seasons. Flashback to February 24, 2001. That Marquette's last home loss. It came against Louisville. So the old Will after that one, as you can see, has for this one. First half. Rick Pitino, team known for its full court press. And how effective was it in this one, Digger? Well, you saw how right here you get an inbounds and take it to score. When you do that, many things can happen. Diener has the ball, finds an opening in your sideline, and takes it to the middle, splits the trap, gets a quick dish, bang, they hit the shot. Now, Louisville, of course, when you see this happen again, 
To run your press, you've got to score. But they start the game shooting six for 20, and as you saw there, Marquette just took it right through and scored on that press sequence. And not very conducive to the press, those kinds of numbers. Now it's Robert Jackson. Will move down low, gets the layup. Marquette down by one. Five and a half to go. Louisville down by three. Reese Gaines. Reese Gaines hitting the big three. The Wisconsin native ties it at 62. Less than two minutes to go. Dwayne Wade off glass. Golden Eagles down by two, Digger. Yeah, and guess who? A banker. Again, gets it done. Final 15 seconds now. They inbound it to Diener. Big shot. Makes oh, it. Clutch. Makes it for a big three. Ties it up at 70. Less than 10 seconds to go, though. Gaines answering. Nearly the identical Ooh. spot. Louisville up by three. Did leave too much time, though. Marquette's got a chance. Diener going to throw up the prayer right here. And would it be answered? No. Louisville hangs on, ends that 28-game home winning streak of Marquette. 73-70 the final in really just a tremendous game. It really was. Digger, Conference USA Player of the Year right now. Reese Gaines or Dwayne Wade? Reese Gaines. There's Hands down. Cards 8-1 on the road. They were 3-10 last year. Rick Pitino, his team was coming off the loss, as we told you, but he said that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Very early on in this one, Darren Williams getting Cook involved as he throws down the jam. Later in the first, Cook showing off his passing skills. James Augustine finishes it off. Alana up by seven early. David Teague heating up for Purdue. It's the three, and then it's another one, and, and another, and Teague was getting it going. He scored nine straight Purdue points. And the problem is those were the only nine points he had in the ball game. Still in the first, Illini down by one. Brian Cook to Dee Brown, who lays it in. Illinois up by one, Digger. Uh, then Kenny Lowe, who took this game over right from the start. Great baseline move, makes it happen there. Comes back again, steps up, hits the big three in a corner. He has 23 big points for Purdue tonight. Late in the second half, Brett Busher in transition. Gets it to Dean, hits, and the foul. Gene Cady and the Boilermakers improved to 13-0 at home as they win this one by the final of 70-61, Andy. However, Purdue ends the Big Ten race at Michigan State and at Michigan. So the Wolverines that are not eligible for the NCAA tournament could have a huge say in who wins the Big Ten title. But Sean Harrington, who didn't start, didn't have any points, he fouls out. They've got to get him going shooting threes because they were horrible tonight shooting threes. Six for 23, and their turnovers gave up 19 turnovers. Purdue got 23 points. Gene Cady's defense playing tenacious when it counts. As for Indiana and Wisconsin, we all know Mike Davis's team really struggling. 0-4 in conference road games this year. First half, Hoosiers up by one. Jeffrey Newton on the baseline with the shot clock winding down. Puts him up by three. 20 and 12 for Newton. Late first half, Hoosiers up six. Bracey Wright off the feed from Newton. Throws it down. Wright had just six points. Start of the second half now. Badgers down by eight. Devin Harris just one of eight in the first half. Hits the three. Badgers down five. Next possession, Mike Wilkinson. That was Scott is getting it going at this point. Down by two. Then it's Alondo Tucker. And just like that, Wisconsin on top after the free throw started five for five from the field in the second half, Digger. And then they start driving a gap. Pretty good job, Wisconsin. Finding gaps and anything they can make a penetration move, it's always going to be there. Make the move to the middle. When you have it there, kick it. Someone's going to be open. If not, you shoot yourself. Freddie Jones, Freddie Owens makes it, put him up 40-35. Now Harris comes back, a little pull up in the paint. It's 45-39. Then Harris again makes it happen. And from that standpoint, this is where Indiana broke down. As you can see, 71-59 your final. Wisconsin still has not lost a Big Ten home game under Bo Ryan. A second half, Indiana gets outscored 50 to 30. And Andy, you can't play that kind of defense on the road in the second half. No, there's no way you're gonna win. But Wisconsin has the edge in schedule. And so many times in the in these leagues that have unbalanced schedules, that's where you win it. And look. UConn's leading scorer Ben Gordon arrested Friday, charged with allegedly hitting a female student. This female was also arrested. She was charged with allegedly hitting Gordon. Now, the school says it's going to allow the legal process to run its course, and in the meantime, they will continue to allow Gordon to play for the Huskies. In fact, he was in the starting lineup 
as UConn traveled to Villanova on Saturday. We pick it up beginning of the second half. UConn down by three, and it's Gordon hitting a three. Ties it up at 36. He had 25 points for UConn. Same score now. Mecca Okafor. No. Hilton Armstrong. Oh, yes. UConn on top by two. Digger, but Gary Buchanan. Yeah, the hottest guy in the Big East shooting threes. Knocks this one down. 15 points in the first half. Ties it now at 41-41. Now Villanova up by five. Marcus White. Tell Derek Snowden, how dare you? And Gordon on the other end to lay up UConn down just three. Buchanan makes it a six-point game. He had a tremendous outing. Now Villanova up by two. Ricky Wright throwing down the follow jam. Nova up by four, Digger. Yeah, Villanova just really made things happen when they counted. All over the glass. Did a great job on the boards, especially in the second half. More from your guy Buchanan here. Oh, 28 points. Big. Made it happen when it counted. At his sixth three-pointer of the game, ended up 6 of 12 from behind the arc. Nova wins it by 9. UConn really struggled. 24 turnovers on the road, and Ben Gordon only three points in the first half out of his 25. That doesn't work for UConn's offense. Lute Olsen's crew looking very good. Channing Fry. Yeah, big, 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 big guy. In the first half, 18 points. Came to play, did a job inside. Still in the first half now, Jason Gardner. Behind the arc, nails the three. Arizona on a 13-0 run has taken over this game. Check this out, though. Jerry Dupree. Oh, beyond midcourt. Oh. It's a little momentum for USC going into the locker room. It would not last for particularly long, although they did cut it to four here as Eric Craven lays it in. Four-point ball game, but and Fry taking over. Career high 25 for him, 11 for 13 from the floor. Throws one down right there, and then catch just pulling away. Hassan Adams off the inbounds play right there, and then Luke Walton throwing the alley-oop. Arizona looking very good down the stretch. Making it happen when it counted. Southern Cal had a little 10-2 run that first half, went up 27-26, but that was it. Two big wins over UCLA and Southern Cal. Arizona now legit number one in the country with training. Channing Fry getting double-doubles in the paint. But Digger, they may not win the Pac-10. Their next three games at Arizona State, at Cal, at Stanford. We're going to learn a lot more about this team over the next week and a half. 16th straight 20-win season for Arizona. That is the longest streak in the nation. Remember, only two of those three teams will get a bye in day one of the Big East Tournament. That's critical because no team has ever won the Big East Tournament without getting a bye. 32,116 on hand. Huge crowd at the Carrier Dome for the game between Notre Dame and Syracuse. Hakeem Warwick, the jam and the foul. Cuse up by seven. Then Carmelo Anthony with the layup digger. Yeah, but then it comes down to Danny Miller. He hits this big three, gives Irish momentum as they go up 38-37 at halftime. Second half now, Miller. Three from the wing, ties it at 44. Chris Thomas. He hits the three. Notre Dame up by one. The Irish can shoot. I don't think that's in doubt. Matt Carroll, that's a three ball. Notre Dame up by two. But again, it's Thomas. For the three, it's a 10-point Notre Dame lead at this point, Digger. Thomas and Carroll took the game over for the Irish in the second half. They go up 12, and then guess what happens? Carmelli Anthony. Don't let him get started. Inside, on the glass, gets the first one to go. Now, give him the ball. Up and under and in, or on the baseline, another big basket. Reads it, looks, one-on-one, -on -one, whirl, slam down, get it down, you got it. They make the run to get back in the game. Freshman looking outstanding. Eight-point ball game now. Warren. Oh. McNamara, another one. That ties it up at 69. Less than 30 seconds to go now. Notre Dame down by two. Carroll, the big three, puts the Irish up by one. But Syracuse answers. McNamara. Give it to the rookie, the freshman from the corner. Yes, he makes the big three. They're up 82-80. One last chance now for Notre Dame. I love the heads up here. Just toss it in the air. Well, you better have that thing get out. Notre Dame gets it. They can throw Danny Miller. No, no, no. Didn't get it. Yeah, it still bought him about four or five seconds, and that was critical. And, and Beheim was confused by the whole thing. I think, <laughs> I think he was confused by the storming. Enough with the storming. What are they storming for Cornell? Well, what's your fascination? <laughs> Enough. Top man. ten team, Randy. Right? You got to do that. I like that, Andy. 82 80 Syracuse wins this one. McNamara hit the big shot at 17 points. 2,000 
of his fellow townspeople from Scranton, Pennsylvania made the trip to watch this game. And you know why? Because it's also a huge Notre Dame town. Oh, the they crowds there. Yeah, they come out of the woodwork up there in Syracuse. We've always had good games at the Cuse. Very interesting second half. Andre Barrett for the Hall. Picks up the loose ball and takes it all the way. For the layup, he finished with 17. Then it's Andre Sweet. Nice little spin move. 15 of his 17 in the second half. And yeah, Seton Hall pulling this one out. The Pirates are getting hot. Sweet hits the three-pointer. Pull off the big win. 73-61. The Hall takes this one, so Pittsburgh, chance to gain a little ground. They don't take advantage. Well, Mike and Page combined for four for 21. They shoot four for 26 on threes. They forget about Lett and Trotman, who are seven for 12. Less threes, more points in the paint. Pitt will find their offense. The Panthers fall half game behind Syracuse. They're tied with Notre Dame. They are even in the loss column, all three of those teams. Coming into this one, but... Obviously, the Gators, pretty tough club coming into Knoxville. Ron Slay, though, had the answer. Oh, he's too much. He goes outside, goes inside, hits the big threes. I'm telling you something, 20 points, 11 rebounds in this contest. Just dominates anything and everything. Second half, we're tied at 48. Matt Bonner, that is a long two. Puts the Gators up by two. He finished with 19. Next possession here, Christian Dreyer falling for the fake. Right there, and he leaves John Higgins wide open. Puts the balls on top, 51-50, hitting the three. Then Dreyer, having his problems on the offensive end as well, has it stripped on the fast break now. El Grace Wilborn, elevating. Balls up 53-50, and the balls pull off the upset, 66-59. And this is the biggest problem with Florida. They go 5 for 10 the free throw line. Tennessee goes 17 for 21. So, Florida, what are you doing? Shooting from the perimeter, not going to the basket. That's why Tennessee beat you by 12 on the free throw line. And the Ron Slay family has to create space on his mantle for two awards, SEC MVP and Comeback Player of the Year after an ACL injury last season. Wow. First win over a top five opponent for the Volunteers since February of 93. So a huge win for the Tennessee program. We keep it in the SEC. Tubby's team hasn't lost at home to LSU since 1989. First half, it's Keith Bogans. The drive and nice move on the baseline. Kentucky by six at the half. Second half, they're up 14. It's Bogans to Jules Kamara. He hits the jumper. He had four points. Not a huge game for him. One of three assists for Bogans. And more from Bogans after the air ball. Chases it down in the corner and hits the three. He had 20. And Kentucky wins this one fairly handily, 68-57. And this is how they get you. 15 points off of 12 turnovers in the first half, but they control the board. 46 to 30, 18 offensive rebounds. That's where they punish you in the paint. Let's move to the Atlantic 10, Rhode Island and Xavier. This uh, battle of second place teams. Romain Sato getting it going. And he kept it going. <laughs> this man was absolutely on fire from behind the arc. Romain Sato having a huge game. <laughs> That's him, folks. That's where he shoots on threes. Hitting it just about everywhere. Nine threes today. And the other guy, David West, how about 26 and 16? Ugh. They're physical. Nobody can beat this team in the 8-10 when it counts. Sato just hitting from all over the place, as you can see. It's where will he hit from next, and if about, you had the corner right there, you win. Yeah. How about that statement he just made? Xavier's still got to go to St. Joe's. Don't matter. I love him. The 8-10 tournament. Get off your St. Joe's bandwagon in just a minute when we show the next highlight. All right, enough. David West, 26 and 16, as Digger mentioned, but it's Sato who was the story. Ties his own school record with eight threes in a game, and then breaks it with his ninth three coming up right here. He had 34 points, and Xavier cruises in this one. Rhode Island has been a great story this year, but they were outclassed. They lose this one, 93 to 70, and here's your St. Joe's Club. It's a battle of... Coming off a big one over First Temple. Place. Temple. Yeah. Right. Shot 14 for 31 threes. Let's see what they do today. They did it against Temple, but what about against the Dayton Flyers? That's Brooks Hall right there. Then the second half, Dayton up by seven. Mark Jones hitting the tough hoop. Dayton up by nine. More from Jones. Nice dish to Hall for the hoop. He had 13, and Phil Martelli's team loses this one, Andy. What's that mean? It's the choke song. 66-56.
Yeah, and they only go seven for 23 in those threes today after shooting 14 for 31 against Temple. Hey, right. You see Dayton, they in? They are in. Oh, definitely in. No question, they are in. Keep in mind, the A-10 tournament is in Dayton as well. So you got St. Joe's, Dayton, Xavier, definitely in. What will it take for Rhodey to get in? Oh, no, no chance. No <laughs> chance. Are the I around 70? No. Come yeah, on, yeah, 70? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 70? Yeah. You're talking about, it's like Northwestern, forget it. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. They don't have a shot, I'm telling you, no. You can't have an ARP guy that needs an ARP card That's and right. still get in. That's right. One ended a 52-game road losing streak at Princeton on Friday night. They had never won there in a series that dates back to 1908. Now they're trying to end another streak. It's been Penn and Princeton every single year winning the Ivy League since 1988. Cornell, the last team other than Penn or Princeton out of the Ivies to make the NCAA tournament. But Brown came in tied with Penn for the lead in the Ivies as they battled on Saturday at the Palestra. And First half, Penn down by four. Ugana Onyekwe hits down low. He had 21. Penn down 16-14. Closing seconds of the first half. C.J. King for Brown. Down just six at the break. And then second half, they get going. Patrick Powers strong to the hoop and the foul. This one is tied at 40. Now Brown building the lead. Powers. On the baseline, that's a three. Shot 53% behind the arc. Did the Bears, they're up by four. Powers at 13. Late second half, though, Jeff Schiffner hitting the three. That puts Penn on top, and then David Klotsky puts it away with a three as the Quakers take over first in the Ivy. They win this one by the final of 73 to 66. Moving on now, Big 12, Texas and Nebraska. First half, Texas down by three. Brandon Mouton. Going the length of the court, Texas down just one. More from Mouton. Another layup in transition. Texas up one. Then Mouton for three. Seven straight points for him. He was just getting started. Mouton, nine straight points. More from Mouton. A dozen in a row. Now Mouton on the defensive end. Converging here on Wes Wilkinson. And he gets the steal. Mouton. Once again, just continuing his role. 14 straight points to end the half for Texas. They're five at the break, Digger. Oh, nice block by James Thomas. Who had a big double-double, 10 points, 12 rebounds. And this is where they get it going in transition. T.J. Ford with 10 assists in this big win on the road. Mouton ended up with 24. Texas wins it by 12. Baylor and Oklahoma State, John Lucas watching his son, John, and the Bears. Two minutes to go in the second. Baylor down by one. Shane Gadsden going for the steal. Then Tony Allen will go after the loose ball, and that is going to leave Kenny Taylor open for the three right there. That puts Baylor on top, 74-72. Less than a minute to go now. OSU yeah. down by two, Digger. Get it to Victor Williams. He's a guy that knows how to score. Shoots a jumper. Doesn't go. Now he gets the ball one-on-one -on -one down the middle. Oh, no. Two big defensive rebounds by Baylor. Eddie Sutton trying to figure it out. That's not a great offensive team, OSU. Victor Williams here throws it away. And Baylor celebrates. Eddie Sutton losing for just the second time in 23 meetings with Dave Bliss. Miller just nailed him. 14 to 30 on threes. K-State and Mizzou early second half. Missouri up by six in transition. Ricky Paulding taking it strong and high off the glass. See a team high 19. Later in the second, Tigers up by four. Bryant down low. He had 15 after getting benched to start the game. Still in the second half, Missouri pulling away Arthur Johnson. Arthur Johnson, 14 points, 17 big rebounds for that 10-point win. As Missouri takes it, we take a look at the Big 12 standings. Top five in the conference. Kansas going to play on Sunday night against Iowa State. And then you see it is very tightly packed. Three teams tied for second. OSU, Oklahoma, and Texas. Back to the SEC now. Ole Miss and Mississippi State. 20 seconds to go. Justin Reed coming up big with the tip in. That ties it at 53. Last chance now for the Bulldogs. They get it inside. Mario Austin cannot get it to go. We're headed into overtime, Digger. Overtime. Anything can happen in overtime. And everything does happen here. Reed puts Ole Miss on top 62-61. Then Austin 
The hope and the foul. Mississippi State up by two. Austin had 19. And State forcing the turnover. Harper! Indeed it does. Mississippi State gets the win, 68-64. Murray off the 19 points, 17 rebounds, 21 turnovers at Ole Miss, though. Vandy and Georgia pick this one up in the second half. Chris Daniels is part of a 9-0 run to start the second half for the Dogs. Later in the second half, another steal. It's Jarvis Hayes. He had 16. A Georgia in transition, Ezra Williams. Ends up with the jam 16 for him as well. Georgia wins at 83-70. They remain unbeaten at home. 82 free throws. 82 fouls in this. 82 three throws. Wow, they just kept them going. Referee's horrible that game. <laughs> Don't hold back, Digger. Auburn and Alabama. Ernest Shelton finishing with a nice little reverse. Tied up by 10. Shelton had 11. And Kennedy Winston, little fingertip roll. Bam up by 16. They needed a game like this. Winston finishes with 15. And Irwin Dudley. He had 20 and 10, and Bama rolls in this one, 84-68. Balance on offense, 15 assists on 29 baskets, but defensively held the 35%.